welcome. And we are uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, episode one hundred and eighty-three of Doctor Who: Time and Space. And today, me, Lewis Moon, and me, D. Cool, Doctor Cool, shall be uh, taking stuff from the bum hole of space and time <laughs> to try and deliver to you uh, some um, some stuff from what has happened in the last seven days in the Doctor Who... What happened Ooh, there? I don't know. The um, last seven days in the Doctor Who universe. Let me check. Yeah, we, um, we as, uh, as, as Lewis said, we are a, uh, a team... Uh, yeah, we're a, a father, and, father son and son team. Father and son team that talk about Doctor Who. We talk about new Who stuff. We talk about classic Who stuff, and we talk yeah. about class at the moment. Yeah. So what do we have on this week's show? Well, it's a, as as I just wanted to say, it's a long running show. This podcast we've it been is. going for one hundred and eighty three episodes. That's right. But we're fairly new to those that have caught up with us on iTunes or Podomatic. This podcast this one, on there. On there. Is it all caught up on iTunes? Have it's all caught up. All yeah. four shows on there. All four are on iTunes and hopefully this fifth one is now and that may be where you're listening to it from as we, well not as we speak, as you listen I guess. Yeah. So I hope, I, I hope you enjoyed the show. What do we have on this week's show? Uh, we will be looking at our top six scenes of all time in Doctor Who of course. Um, in the six episode challenge part, th- in the six mm, challenge part three. Six mm, six scene, six scene challenge. Six scene challenge, but the six episode challenge part what three. Okay, we will be giving our review and our thoughts on the eleventh Doctor episode, the Cold War. We will be reviewing the third episode of Class Night Visiting. We'll be giving you some news and views from the Who-niverse. We will be pressing the magic... Wait, no. Yeah, we will be pressing the magic randomizer button. Randomizer button. And then if we've got time, we may do a Who-to-face little game show-y thing at the end. But um, it depends whether we push for time or not. Because the last few weeks, we've been talking far too much. We We try to keep this as close as possible to an hour. We try to do stuff... Wait, let me just load up my new sites and uh, we've been trying to do stuff because there's been a lot going on in the Doctor Who universe at the moment. There certainly has. Yeah. Thinking about life more generally, what have you been up to over the last week, whether it's <sighs> Doctor Who related or other geek related I've been, things? I've not been doing anything other than Doctor Who but I, I suppose I've done my fair few stuff in terms of watching a couple of things. Okay, like what? Uh, and listening and as well getting some merch. Okay, well, mm. start with the. Well, what should we go with first? Give it the merch first. What have you got merch? Okay, wise? so a trip to Forbidden Planet. Yeah. Southampton. Yep. Southampton, Forbidden Planet. Um, obviously, not the big London one. I only get to go there once a year, probably, but, you know, it's good. Uh, but the. Um, I continued my pop. Funko collection with the War Doctor pop. Okay, looks really good. He does look really cool. Yeah. Yeah, one of, my, one of your favourites, I know. I think because, I think the ones that um, the ones that work the best for me are the ones where they they, they got a real defined character, which is why, although I still like, you know, I like all of them, but I think like if you take ones like the Christopher Eccleston one, he's not got enough about yeah. his face or anything to uh, make it really... Yeah really sort of stand out my favourite is the Sarah Jane one yeah, partly fun. because of her costume yeah no, that is really good and still still it's difficult to beat the Tom Baker one yeah did they have all of the new ones in there uh, yes I think they did yeah the Davros one's really big the yeah sorry we were talking about that the other day it seems really odd doesn't it because he's, he's the gonna... same size as the TARDIS yeah which is just going to mean it's going to stand out strangely um, with all your other yeah. pop yeah heads. they had the 12th dot with the I think cool. or at least I saw that in another shop yeah uh, there was the 11th Doctor with hand and the 10th Doctor no the 10th Doctor with hand and the 11th Doctor as Mr. Clather okay so that's your merchandise you got well, and, no, and I, as well as uh, I got the next issue of my Tales from the TARDIS Doctor Who magazine oh cool so Did that look good yes it did 
Um, I, I, for some reason, I've been doing lots of things this week, Doctor. I've uh, been Half doing term, quite a few do- things Doctor Who related. Yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, the problem is, until Christmas, I probably won't have many. Well, I'll soon be starting my Christmas marathon. I suppose that's end of November hmm. that I start doing that. Um, also, uh, I've been watching a, a, a few, a couple of episodes of Doctor Who. Uh, it was six years ago since I started with my Doctor Who fandom. Yeah. So I thought, let's watch Human Nature, Family of Blood, which was my first Doctor Who story. And it is, it is a classic. It's still as good as you remembered it being? Yes, it is. And it was one good. that... Oh, no, you had it in your top six episodes of all time, didn't you? I did. I, I if, didn't if, quite you, make mine, if you but. haven't seen the video yet, then I'd check it out. If it's out yet, mm-hmm. I can't. I don't know whether it's out because we haven't edited it yet. No, it's not. Spoiled something, if it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forgot about that. But um, yeah, it's uh, that. All should be out later on, actually. We'll, yeah. we'll get that going. The so that that's that and that. Um, what about you? Do you you said you'd been listening to stuff as well. You've been working oh, yeah. your way through your audio. Yeah, my next part of my audio. I'm on to part two now of the Rosa Marinas. Okay, which is part one of, of the, the Lost Stories range. Lost Stories of Patrick Charlton yeah. here. Almost at the end of disc one. Yeah, now, sounding so. good? Yes, it does sound good. Excellent. Okay, um, and then obviously, as, as well as that, we've both been watching the Cold War, which yes, we'll talk yes, about later on in our, in our review. Yeah. And class episode three. And class episode three. Yeah. Which we should talk about shortly. Yeah, soon. Quite a lot for me mm. this week. Well, I've watched a lot, but um, obviously, other than the ones we just mentioned, they weren't necessarily Who related. So I had the the big extravaganza first episode of the new series of Walking Dead, which was a a blood thirsty yep. splattering. Don't spoil anything, though, Decal. Just I will not for spoil those people who haven't anything. watched it yet. But it's fairly grueling. It's a hard going episode. Very, very good. Really enjoyable. Is enjoyable the right phrase? I'm not sure about it. Not sure that I'm not still a bit disturbed. Obviously, obviously, I haven't watched it just to say because I'm underage, but I know everything that's happened. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. Um, so I watched that. That was really, really enjoyable to see that back. Um, we should look forward for the next episode of that. Um, and I can't keep going with uh, Westworld, which is enjoyable. Luke Cage. Sure. And Luke Cage, yeah. Yeah. But um, Westworld. Really like the first two episodes of Westworld were really good. Third one, still good, but um, I don't know. The only thing I wonder about with Westworld is whether the novelty is going to wear off a little bit as the as the series goes on. But but it's it's still enjoyable. And then Luke Cage. Luke Cage is really good actually. Is it? Yeah, it's quite different than the other superhero Netflixy one, but similar in so far as it's still. Is it not as good? No, it is. It's in a completely oh. different way. It's it's really good. It's um. It's it's more down to earth. So the the villains in it aren't quite as sort of like super powered as as what we would have seen in daredevil and um and jessica jones uh it's more more sort of like ganglandy based but it's really really good yeah okay. good, good to definitely recommend that one um yeah so that's that's my week really cool the week that was yeah so should we should we, on that note then should we um crack on to our our first discussion around around class episode three night visiting <laughs> Last week, Class, the new Doctor Who spin-off, the first two episodes of it dropped online. And we, uh, last week, we did have high praise for the first two episodes, particularly the first. Yep. We said the second wasn't as good, but it was still better than most things. Yeah, no, definitely, uh, definitely, still a good, definitely a good story. And you can, you can catch the full review of that on the... Uh, on last week's podcast, of, episode yeah. 182. Yeah, which is called Class of 16 on YouTube. But um, you could also catch the first three episodes on iPlayer, on the BBC3 section, or it's on the homepage, actually. Hmm. That's, of course, assuming you're in the UK, because I'm not sure oh, if yeah. you're in America. If Unless you're in you America, you yet. have to wait until, like, March. Yeah. Sorry. We feel sorry for you, but you do get Power of the Daleks in the cinema. You do, so it all swings around about because yeah. we don't get that. So, um, what was the what was episode three? 
Well, first of all, spoiler alert. But episode yes, three, what spoiler was, alert, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. What? Oh, should I get a description up? Yeah, you get yourself a description. So, um, third episode dropping on uh, BBC Three. And yeah. really early as well, wasn't it? So It was. It was like 9, 9.30 this week. Yeah. So, uh, and we watched it probably just gone 10, wasn't it? I think something like that. Yeah. So not that long after it, it first hit the uh, the internet. And, um, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was later than it normally is. Yeah, and um, again, you know, again, a very enjoyable episode. It I is. Think. Let's read a description. So then, London is infiltrated by an eerie alien with the ability to morph into the shape of lost loved ones. Tanya has an unexpected visitor uh, come to her window in the dead of night, and she's not the only one as Ram and Miss Quill face their own startling visitors. Confronted with these emotional encounters, the team must overcome the persuasion of this strange new threat and battle through the streets to stop Tanya from being lost forever. And what was the episode called? Night Visiting. Night Visiting. Okay, so interesting concept. Yes, it is. It's um, very different again yeah. from the first two, I'd say. So what did you make of it? Um... I really enjoyed it actually. A mm. really a really a really good one. I thought this one focused mostly around Tanya. Yes. But also, you know, it focused around other characters. Um yeah, I believe this one was better than the second one. Yep, I'd agree. Not the best one, but I I wouldn't say it was as strong as the first. No, maybe but not. But I'd still say it was really good. Um you know, it was it was a very good idea to the whole story. Hmm. It um, I think what I think is quite interesting about the way they, they they've done classes. There's quite a lot of a lot of sort of foreshadowing in it, isn't it? Hmm. Each of the episodes, they 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 would just make sort of brief references yeah. to stuff which is going to have an importance later Setting on. Setting up for the next five episodes. Yeah. So if we think in the last episode, I think I think it was in the second episode where. Tanya started talking about her dad that yeah. had died. Um, yeah, she's, yeah, it was either the first or the second. Yeah, but I think which, it was, which was a bit of a lead in to this episode. And similarly, might have been at the very end of the first one. I might think. have been. Yeah, there was also um, towards the end of the second episode last week, April ignored a phone call from her father. Yeah, and we found out more about her father in this episode. Yeah. And obviously that's going to then lead on, I think, probably to something in the next episode. I think there or, is something or, in the next episode. Yeah. So they've done that on, on a number of occasions, actually, I think. Yeah. Just little hints of things which are going to be important later on. And that, that, I think that's quite good. What do you think, I mean, in terms of spin-offs, we've obviously had a couple of spin-offs from Doctor Who before. We've had uh, Sarah Jane Adventures. And we've yeah. had um, Torchwood in, in recent Yes, years. we have. How... What do you think works well about it as, as, as a spin-off, this one? Uh, what, do you th- what do you think it compares to? I think it works well at showing who it's for, mm-hmm. you know? It works well as a young adult series. Yeah. And it's not a kid series or it's not an adult series. It's somewhere in between. Yeah. I think I said, I, it made me think of... Um, the, the feel of it to me is like a scarier version of Sarah Jane with a bit yep. of gay kissing in it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, uh, but it's got a similar sort of story concepts, I, th- I think, are quite similar to the sorts of thing they would have had yep. in um, in Sarah Jane. Yeah. But it obviously has has got like we, I think we talked about last week. It definitely got a little bit more of a horror edge. Are you warming to all the characters? Do you are you liking all the characters? In yes, it? I think I am. I think yeah. they've all got something good about them. Yeah, and in fact, actually. It didn't take very long to warm to the characters either. Yeah, did it? to set up to yeah. to them. Uh the first two episodes sort of did that and I think from now on yeah. we can sort of from this episode onwards we can sort of you know, the only character I think I didn't know enough about was Tanya and I think I know that now. Yeah. No indeed, that's that's right. What do you make of um of the teacher, because she's an interesting character, isn't oh, she? Oh, yeah, yeah, I like her. Yeah. Catherine Kelly as Miss Quill. She's, she's really mad and bonkers and 
funny. A little bit horrible, isn't she? she really, is, she's yeah. like a real evil editor. Yeah, but I like we like the fact that she can't use weapons. Yes. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing was, and again, a bit of a spoiler coming along here. The at the end of it, she did say something about needing weapons and picked up some items. Yeah. I so it'd be interesting did, to see yeah. what happens with that. I can't remember why she can't pick up weapons. Whether that was part of her punishment, and somebody's going to come down was, and kick her yeah. butt. For, um, yeah, for being the quill mm-hmm, yeah. person. So, gore factor then. Yeah. Um, can be a bit for for a sort of a young adult thing. It's it's got it has got a little bit of gore in it. I don't think it was that bad this episode no. in terms of gore. I think it was more of the side of, you know, uh, you know, you know yeah. what? I yeah, mean. yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Um, <laughs> but um, I think. There were some gory bits in this episode. I don't think it was as bad in the, this episode. What well, do you? Gory, um, I mean, there was some. There was some, the moment, wasn't there, where uh, because because all these beings are being brought, all the people, family members being brought yeah. back to life, and there's a guy talking to his mum, yeah. and um, she basically sort of says, "Come and hold my hand, son." And then as soon as he touches his hand, he sort of like eaten basically, isn't yeah. he? And that was that was quite horrible, but um, interesting idea, I thought. Really interesting yeah. idea. What they should do, of course, is just blow up Coal Hill School. They should, yeah. <laughs> because all evil emanates from there now. And the the good thing about this episode is Coal Hill Academy. By Coal Hill Academy. They didn't sorry. even go inside the school, did they? Don't think they did. No, no, no. not at any point. I don't think they went outside it. We yeah. saw the the outside in the rift, but we didn't actually yeah. see inside of the school in this episode, which was weird. And actually, I'm really glad about that. One of the things I was a bit worried about when the series was first announced was that I had a feeling it was going to be too based around the school. Yeah, but and this episode wasn't at all. And No, and I don't think any of them have been really. No. I mean, obviously the first one set the scene a little bit with, with um, uh, the prom and stuff like that. But yeah. all, all that the school does is it provides some sort of setting reason, for a, set, a, a setting for them reason. all being together, isn't it, really? Yeah. A bunch of school friends that have to save London slash yeah. the world. And I mean... At the beginning, they don't really like each other. No. No, indeed. You know, but now they sort of become more of, more, f- you know, more of a team. They have. Or with um, Ram and April, a little bit of a couple thing yeah. going on there, isn't there? A bit of kissy-kissy yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah. So, all in all then... Um, it's keeping up, you know. It's a good series, isn't it, so far? Yes, it is a good series. I think it's it's a really um, solid couple, uh, a solid few opening episodes. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to where it goes next. Certainly, the trailer for next week looks really good, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. So you've got you've got the the villains from the first episode back. Yeah, um, so I love what the they called sh- again. The Shadow King. He yeah. he is so cool. Yeah. Korakinus. Yeah. 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 So um, that looks good. Yeah. Next time looks quite good. Hmm. Might be a two-parter, I think, from reading the synopsis. Oh, you think that so? That we're going to read today. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's kind of. Okay, that's interesting because it's got the same monster in. It's sort of got two stories. It's got one with April. Yeah. And then it's got another with. The others. Oh, okay. April. Apart from maybe Ram. April's yeah. probably still my favourite character in it. Yeah. I think. And. Um, it looks like she's going to have quite a good story next time, doesn't she it? She will. Is it sort of really, because she's obviously deemed to be quiet and nice, and something's yeah. going to fire off a little That's bit there. That's not going to be next time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, we picked up. I think uh, was it Dot Two TV where they had the ratings for yep. it, and they used they used the uh, the school based system of A Star A Star to the F. What would you? Where would you class this? This one gets the same. As Coach of the Dragon Tattoo mm-hmm. and Night Visiting gets a B plus for us. Yeah, I think I, I do agree. She's an you. equivalent yes. to an eight, I think, mm-hmm. which is quite high, but it's not meant to be. Yeah. It's not an eight in my. It, 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 it is an eight probably. Yeah, but it'd be interesting to see to compare at the at the end of the series how it fits alongside some of the rankings for for who. Yeah. So if we were to actually count these as Doctor Two episodes, where would we be placing them? Yeah. So it's, 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 yeah, perhaps we'll look at that at some point. Perhaps uh, when we do a, a season summary at the end of the... Yeah. Uh, in, sort of 
towards the end of December, is it? When uh, does it finish? It's beginning of December it ends, December. so we'll okay. probably be doing that when we're reviewing episode 8, we'll be doing a little summary. Okay. Anything else to say about class this week then? No, I don't think so. It's just this week's was another good episode, second best in the series, mm-hmm. and it's continuing to look like a really strong series. All of the characters are good. Um, and looking forward to next week's. Good. Well, in that case then, let's bring this on to the next item, which is... The news. <laughs> So then, the news this week. To start with, we've got a bit of class news and then we'll move on, I think, entirely to Doctor Who news. Okay. So Story synopsis. Ooh. For episode five of class. And uh, episode five has been revealed to be called Brave-ish Heart. It's another heart-related one. And we know that there is this thing with, with April having this heart of... Shadow Kin. Yes. Yeah. So, battling through the Shadow Kin realm, April knows there is no going back. She has to defeat Korakinus. On Earth, the invasion of the Petals is rapidly snowballing. Uh, confronted with the threat of the planet's extinction, new uh, headmistress Dorothy attempts to uh, force Charlie into making a transformational decision. But uh, Miss Quill has other ideas for him. As Charlie, I could never pronounce the other boy's name. No, I, I, I can't see it. Matwez or something. Okay, where is it? Point to it on the screen. Matwez or something. It looks like Matty, but Matthias? I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't, guy, I can't remember what guy, it is. Uh, yeah, his boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. and Tanya tried to stop the petals from an- annihilating the human race. April must fight the terrifying force of Korakinus Cor- light years away from home. Now, I, I don't like the sound of the deadly alien petals. <laughs> I was just going to make a comment on that. Oh no, not the petals. <laughs> They're going to kill us all. Oh, oh no. What is it? Is it a Dalek? Is it a side man? Is it an ice warrior? No, it's a petal. It's a bit <laughs> like that, isn't it? La, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's but, like the Triffids, now the petals. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I'm yeah. Be interesting to see what it is. Certainly, yeah. the if that's a two part or or a sort. I think of it two-parter. sounds like it because if we take a look at the story synopsis for episode four, mm-hmm. let's see. Yeah, just remind us what that was. April starts to feel effects of sharing her heart with Korakinus, and his attempts to severe the attachment only make it stronger. When April's estranged father makes a startling appearance, she confronts him with Shadowkin Force, manifesting traits of the Shadowkin leader. Frightened by this extraordinary newfound power, April seeks comfort in Ram and vows to reclaim her heart as her own. Meanwhile, something strange is happening to the others. London is slowly being infested with unusual sinister flower petals. Do you remember the um, <laughs> there's a Sarah Jane uh, story? I think it's one of the ones with the Slo- not the, Slo- the Slovenes yeah. in I it. think it had the Blatherine in yeah, right, okay, that's right. And that was all about these weird plants, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Well, that, that was a really good story, wasn't it? But if you, if you read in the synopsis about it being about weird plants, you'd immediately think it's going to be a bit of pants. But you probably would, yeah. But I'm, I've got good hopes for this series. I think it's been, it's been a lot better than I anticipated being. Yeah. So roll on more class, even if it has got scary petals in it. Yes. So, next bit of news. Uh, Power of the Daleks. Can't be long now, is it? Next week. Next week. Why next so? Saturday. Oh, it actually gets released next Saturday. On the BBC store. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, It's not on DVD until the two weeks after that. Okay. So we haven't decided, because we obviously want to bring you, our listeners, um, news on our views of Power of the Daleks as early as we can, but we haven't yet worked out whether we're going to download it or wait for it to come out on DVD, have we? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we shall work that out as time as time gets nearer. So, BBC Worldwide has confirmed the additional material that will be included on the release of the animated version of Power of the Daleks. Can you hear me from here, guys? Yeah, that's Does fine. It yeah, make yeah. A... No, I can see it. Um, the highly anticipated adventure will be released on BBC Store on Saturday, the fifth of November, exactly fifty years to the minute after it was transmi- first transmitted on BBC One at 5.50 p.m. The UK release of the DVD will follow on Monday the 21st of November. 
Uh, a wealth of extra material will be available uh, with both BBC Store and DVD releases. Extra Treats fans uh, can look forward to uh, include commentaries and surviving footage, together with a documentary feature which stars the original cast and crew. Other bonus features include a gallery of artwork from the animation and original shooting script. There's even a rare chance to hear the original Dalek recordings from the show. Mm-hmm. Power of the Daleks is one of the most Doctor's most celebrated adventures and yet no complete film recordings of Power of the Daleks are known to have survived. The master negatives were destroyed in an archive purge in 1974. The six 25 minute episodes feature the regeneration, or as it was called then, renewal, of First Doctor William Hartnell into Second Doctor Patrick Troughton as the Time Lord and his companions Polly and Ben uh, do battle uh, with the Daleks on the planet Vulcan. Uh, Doctor Who The Power of the Daleks will be available from the BBC store from 5th of November where each episode will air on consecutive days. Wow. Oh, right, okay, see. so they're not releasing it in one go. They're, no. releasing, they're releasing the episodes one by one to buy. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So, um, obviously we won't be able to talk about it next week because it doesn't get released. You said it was released... They release it in the evening to coincide with the time it was yeah. broadcast live. Okay, so so at best, oh, in that case, then are they releasing then? Sorry, I'm probably repeating what you just what you just read out. But does that mean they're releasing one episode a week? One episode a day. One episode a day. Okay, I'm just wondering why it is that they're taking until the end of November till they bring it out on DVD. Uh, neither do I. Maybe it's a sales ploy because they know that people will download it because they want to see it quickly but they'll also want all the, the covers and everything yeah. like that so it's, it's probably that isn't it it's probably knowing that they get double whammy yeah probably Grrr. Grrr. don't fall for it people don't um, fall for it yeah no, well I'm, I'm really looking forward for, for seeing yeah this this story I, I love my patch of child and stuff anyway and uh, it's just going to be really good to see what as I said is, is, is meant to be one of the best episodes of yeah. made, isn't it? Well, talking about Power of the Daleks, as we're on that same theme, I thought I, I'd mention that it's... Um, that the other week we mentioned... Let's see, what other week was it? Was it last week? Uh, Could have been. Two weeks ago, mm-hmm. we chatted about Power of the Daleks getting an American cinema viewing. Yeah. Uh... But BBC Worldwide and Shamil Films have announced a limited run theatrical uh, screening of the animation of Paris of Daleks from Saturday the 12th of November for one week only ahead of its release on DVD. The cinema event will also uh, feature exclusive bonus content including interviews with members of the original cast. Screenings of the story have uh, already been announced. Uh, in cinemas in the US and at the BFI in London, which, no, that hasn't happened yet. The Lost Story has been animated to mark the 50th anniversary of the original transmission of the story, the first full adventure for the second Doctor. Tickets for Doctor Who Proud the Daleks can be purchased in the show notes, which will mention that at the end of the news, mm-hmm. so you know, so I don't have to keep repeating myself. For information on participating cinemas, uh, or at the cinema box offices. Proud Daleks is one of the most celebrated Doctor Who adventures, and yet we've already been through all of this. This brand new information being released 50 years after its only UK broadcast is based on the programme's original audio co- recordings, surviving photographs, and film clips. Doctor Who Proud the Daleks is produced and directed by Charles Norton, with character designs from uh, acclaimed comic book artist Martin Gorosity and uh, Adrian Salmon. Uh, it will be released on DVD in Australia uh, on the uh, 14th of December. There we have it. So, how much are you looking forward for Power of the Daleks? I'm looking forward to it quite a lot. Yeah. It's gonna, it, it feels like... Um, it, it helps sort of lessen the blow of there being no Who this year, doesn't it? It does, and the yeah. Christmas special, so. I mean, Power of the Daleks is meant to be one of the 
most popular mm. episodes that there has ever been. Yeah. And I think maybe the most popular from Patrick Charlton's. Oh, really? That's, you know. Okay. And the most popular one that's not missing, I suppose. So, moving on then. Yep. To further news, if we have further news. Yes, we do. Um, Titan Comics and Humble Bumble. No. Humble Bumble. Humble. Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle. Bundle, yep. Have announced the launch of the Doctor Who Humble uh, Comics Bundle. Mm. Uh, Humble Bundle, uh, can you stop making me say that, please? <laughs> Uh, offers collections of video games, books and comics at a price determined by the customer. Content is divided into three tiers. Pay one dollar or more to purchase the first tier. Pay eight dollars or more to purchase tier one and two. And pay uh, fifteen dollars uh, or more for content from all three tiers. A portion of each humble bundle its sale goes... Uh, to uh, charity, over seventy-five uh, million dollars have been do donated to charities around the world since uh, the company's launch in twenty ten. Uh, when purchasing the BBC, uh, the Doctor Who Humble uh, Comics bundle, in addition to furnishing with uh, your uh, chosen digital device with the Doctor Who Comics Library, you'll be able to choose to donate any percentage of the bun's retail price uh, to uh, BBC Children in Need, with currently supports over 2,400 projects to help disadvantaged children uh, and young people throughout the UK. It contains 70 comics with appearances from the 3rd, 4th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th Doctors and stories from an array of comic writers. To find out more, um, visit the Humble Bumble uh, website. Humble Bumble? It is actually the whole. It says here, Humble Bumble. Humble Bumble, not the Humble Bundle. So it's Humble Bumble with their Humble Bundle. It is actually the Humble Bumble. Ah, oh. There we have it. Um, the Doctor Who Humble Comics Bundle will be available uh, for purchase from the October the 26th uh, to November the 9th at uh, 10 a.m. PST. Doctor Who is under licence from BBC Worldwide North America. So um, so you can get it now because we're at time of recording. We are oh, yeah. on the 29th of October. Yeah, so you can get it for any time now. I just wanted to say, which I forgot to mention because I was going to save it till the end, but I know I'm going to forget. Mm -hmm. There is a sneak peek for this year's Christmas special, but we haven't watched it yet, so we can't talk about it. Okay. Sadly, we haven't watched it. So when it you say sneak peek, Wednesday. when you say sneak peek, what sort of sneak peek? What's it? What is it? A sneak peek of what? Of the episode itself? No. Just people talking about it. I think it's Stephen just Moffat by looks of it. About it. Okay. Probably all of them. Probably Pete Cat. Yeah. And Matt, me, M, Luke. Okay. Well, we should look email. forward for that as and when it comes. Do we have further news? Is it is it a news busy week or a news light week? In terms of the actual series of Doctor Who, mm -hmm. it's light. But in terms of class, obviously we've already talked mm -hmm. about the class news. And in terms of merch, mm -hmm. it's quite busy. But I think this is our final article. Okay, and it looks kind of the merch related one. Yes, it is another merch related one. Uh, original hardback novels to be republished. So, BBC Books are to re be republish uh, three original Doctor Who novelisations from the 1960s on 3rd of November, uh, reproducing the hardback uh, books with their original covers and content. So, these will be Doctor Who in an exciting adventure with the Daleks, written by David Whittaker, uh, originally published in 1964 based on the story The Daleks by Terry Nation. Uh, so that, that just, I thought for a minute that the, the actual episode title there, not episode, the story title of the book was An Exciting Adventure with the Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great name for yeah, the series. Um, Doctor and the Zabi, written by Bill Stratton, originally published in 1960... Oh, sorry. 
1965. Sorry if there's loads of crashing. You better put this pen away. No, because because again, you are fiddly. you are being the world's biggest fidget. Yeah, originally published in 1965, uh, based on the Doctor Who story The Web Planet, and uh, Doctor Who and the Crusaders, written by David Whittaker, originally published in 1965, based on the Doctor Who story The Crusade. Mm. Uh, is that is that one of the stories that's deleted? The Crusade. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, so that would be an interesting one to see. Yeah. yeah. To be uh, in with a chance to win a set of the novelisations called Sea of BBC Books, you can go to the Doctor Who News website, which will be in the show notes, which I'll mention in a minute. Uh, and you have to answer the question, Susan is referred uh, to by a different surname for the novelisation. What was that name? I have no idea, so I can't go into it. So it's Susan was known by a different form. Uh, by a different form, I think he says. By a different surname. I, I, it's in the novel, so oh, I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. I, I don't She's have not a foreman. She's a something no, else. she must be something else. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the news this week. You can see all of the necessary links, including uh, ways to uh, buy tickets to Power of the Daleks related things get the competition for the novelisations and win the Humble Bundles comics. From Humble Bundle. <laughs> yeah. Um, then you can go to um, the Mr. Lewis Moon Adventures dot com, and you can also check out our Twitter at at dr who time un as in n space. Good stuff. Okay. That's probably our stomach of the news. Let's move on to our main item. Yeah. So then, the top six scenes of Doctor Who. So we, the last few weeks, have been looking at our top six episodes from Classic and New Who in the last two weeks. And now, we are going to be looking at, in the six challenge... Six, six scene challenge. Six scene challenge, but we call it the six challenge uh, and we are going to be looking at our top six themes of all time so in Doctor Who so similar format to last time then so what we did with the episodes ones yeah we both we said what we six. thought were our six favorite ones and then we challenged that to see whether they really were our six favorites mm. okay so what have you got as your six favorite scenes so I'm gonna hit with the I've got three from the black and white era, just to Ooh, say. That's interesting. Which is a bit weird, but uh, I've got the Cybermen down samples uh-huh. uh, from the invasion. I've got uh, Victoria's and the Doctor's chat in Team of the Cybermen. Yeah. I've got the Cybermen going across the bridge. Uh, the, no, the Daleks going across the bridge in the Dalek invasion of Earth. Okay. I've got the Doctor having to choose whether he will destroy the Daleks or not in Genesis of the Daleks. Okay. I've got Vincent uh, Van Gogh visiting the gallery in Vincent and the of Doctor. Course, yeah, yeah. And I've got Tom Baker in Day of the Doctor. Okay, curator. Yeah. Okay, shall I read out what mine are? Yes. There? There's a number of common ones there. So again, the... Genesis of the Daleks part where Tom Baker's talking about destroying with the wa- I called it the two wires scene. Yes, that's right, yeah. Which is possibly the best ever scene ever in Doctor Who. Yeah. Other than possibly the curator scene which we just talked about, which yeah. is my my second one on here from the Day of the Doctor. Um I've also got the second Doctor in Victoria talking about losing yeah. someone. Uh, and that what episode did you say that's two minutes side man. Okay, yeah. Um, and then I've got three others which are, are different ones than you. I've got this is possible whether or not this really deserves to be in here. We'll, we'll debate about it in a minute. But um, I think it's a really great scene, which is from Capaldi's first episode, the cafe scene. That is a good scene. Yeah, um, but we can challenge that in a minute. Yeah. I've gone for the regeneration of Tom Baker with the Watcher. Yes, that is a good scene. I know and then finally, the... and one which I'm surprised isn't in yours, Spearhead from Space, Autons breaking out of the shops. I completely forgot about that scene. I know what's replaced. <laughs> <laughs> so let's 
Let's first of all compare. Let's compare about the, the list that we've got ourselves because you mentioned one that I'd completely forgotten about, which probably <laughs> would push out the Capaldi cafe scene. Okay. Which is the Vincent and the Doctor. Yeah, final I think bit, it's which, a brilliant scene. It's yeah, that, really that I think that is worthy of my top six. So yes. I think I will. However much I love that Capaldi cafe scene, um, it's probably not up to that the quality of. Are you going to swap it? So I'm going. I will swap that straight okay. out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to swap one. I'm going to swap the Daleks going across the bridge yeah. with the spearhead from space. Okay, so the interesting uh, thing about oh yeah, that... Oh, I don't have the pen. So the inter... No, because if you had that pen, you'd be clicking <laughs> it and throwing it around. And every, all everyone would hear at home would be click, click, click. <laughs> so um, that means that four of our favourite scenes are the same. Yes, Again, they are. as I think they were with the episodes, I think we, we ended up with four and same, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did. Uh, what were your two other scenes? So my, my other two scenes were... Uh, what were my other two scenes? Actually, we might agree on... F well, I think we, no, we agree on five now. Yeah, we do. We, there's only one difference. What is it? Which, with me, is the Watcher. Oh, yeah. Which is the, uh, you know, the fourth regeneration. And mine is St Paul's. St Paul's. And I love that scene as well. There's an argument about that pushing, yeah. pushing out some more. Now, the Watcher scene... Mm -hmm. Is a classic moment. Yep. But it is. I'm not. I don't know. Is it one of the best? It's the bit you remember, isn't it, from your childhood? Yes, I think that's probably why. And I it's know. There. I know that's why you're there. And there yeah. are so many scenes which I thought, you know, there were. I was thinking that I should put the Cybermen coming out of the tombs, uh -huh. the tomb of the Cybermen. But I thought I've already got the Victorian, the Doctor scene from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tomb of the Cybermen, and I can't really replace that. So I think actually, um, well, well, we'll come on to this in a minute. I was, yeah, I'll come back to the point I was going to make in a minute. The other ones, I'm going to, a few that I'm going to throw to you as a challenge. Okay. okay. Uh, Zygon invasion, Zygon inversion, the Capaldi dialogue. Oh yeah, um, brilliant scene. Mm -hmm. And spoiler alert: if you haven't watched the video yet. Uh, if, if you want to watch the video, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, like, oh, sorry. If you haven't watched last week's, Zygon Invasion slash Inversion, uh, didn't make my top six overall, but made my top six New Who. Yeah, it was yeah. very close to making the top six yeah. overall. Uh, but I thought that scene, P Cap, was brilliant in that scene. Mm -hmm. Um, is it does it is it of a sufficient quality to get into your top six overall scenes? No. No. Okay. I I also have an episode which I think I think you you love which I, I think the heaven sent moment. Yes. Now the funny thing about heaven sent is I I was thinking about that when I was coming up with my list and I thought surely there's got to be a bit from yeah, heaven's end but, but actually there's no single scene i don't yeah, think yeah that's what i could think i was going to say the diamond wall bit but i thought i like that scene i don't know whether it's i'm not going to say to d cool oh you like that scene why didn't you put it in because it's really me that likes that scene yeah <laughs> now, see, I, I really like the end bit when he breaks the diamond wall but actually the whole episode i think that that scene is too long i think it yes, drags it on for longer on. than it needs to um so so yeah, I, I thought about Heaven Sent, but I, th I think it, that's probably more of a great episode yep. overall than a, than than a single scene. Yeah. Um, other bits I, I'd note down on here, which I'll challenge you. I don't think I'm going to successfully budge anything else. But I'll throw I don't you think I'll anyway. successfully budge, so I won't give up on that. Um, one of the greatest scenes, I think, and it's probably not far out of this, the six, okay. is the scene when you see the Zygon in the hospital Ooh. with Harry. It's so creepy, isn't it? Is, it? It's a, it's the Zygon's the, face. Yes. It's, it's a really great sort of scary moment. Yeah, it's so creepy. Yeah. So I, th I, th I think that And the Zygons are my favourite villains and you've mm. already chosen two of their, their scenes as like yeah. challenges and determiners. Yep. Yes, that's right. And you can't choose any more cause, because the day of the Doctor, I'm not going to choose the Queen Elizabeth bit, and I'm not going <laughs> to choose anything from Day of the Doctor. I do, I do like moments from it, but 
I, I, I don't think it's fair to have two scenes no. from an episode. The other one that I was going to suggest for inclusion is the first time we ever meet the Dalek. Oh yeah, that is a classic that, scene. That is a really great. It's, a really, it is it's a one really that you think about how creepy that must have been yeah. the first time round. When the we don't it's actually Barbara, see the Dalek, do we? No, you just you just scene. see the. We see it at the next part, but we don't actually see. But that I think is a really, really brilliant, Surreal real brilliant scene, scene isn't it? With yeah. uh, with Barbara it, it being really confronted good. by the Dalek. Yeah. So, okay then. So, it, is there anything else that we think? possibly could knock that out I think I, I want to determine something to you and I know it's not going to knock it out Yeah. but um, a great scene another regeneration scene is the second Doctor regeneration scene yeah that is that is a really good really good regeneration oh you're making me all dizzy oh, you're making me dizzy yeah oh. <laughs> yeah that's that is a great that is a great scene um, another really good one, which again doesn't quite fit in there, is 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 the sequence in Listen. Yeah. The end with the, with the creature on the bed. Oh yeah, yeah. Or when when you're not sure. Oh yeah, that's it. That's that's a really then good thing. Then you scene, just see something. Yeah. For a second. But I I don't think that's it's not worthy to it's, get into the. It's a one time six. thing. Yeah. It's yeah. not really doesn't really work the second time. No. Remember me when I was watching Listen, I was just looking away. I know, you watch, you watch this so yeah, from the side, didn't you? Really? I wouldn't do that now, but yeah. so, um, that was two years ago. So So that's probably all of my challenges, because the, the ones that I've put yeah. down as potential challenges, some of them you included anyway. Yeah, I don't... Uh, the only other one I, th I think possibly could get in there is the Daleks coming out of the Thames. Oh yeah. So you've yeah. got the bit when they come over, yeah. going over the bridge. Do you mean the? Uh, is it the Dalek invasion of Earth? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, yeah. What when that Dalek comes up from the sewers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that bit. It is quite cool. So it's a memorable moment. So the interesting thing is then, with a little bit of debate and not too much debate, we'd actually agreed on five on five stories, didn't we? Yeah. So our, so just to wrap that up, we agreed on. Well, uh, well, should we name our final? Five or should five or six or should yeah. We? Before you do, when we were when we were talking about this and before because we hadn't shared our our episodes, but we were talking about it and you said that there was one story that you nearly put two clips from. Was that the Cyberman? Two of the Cyberman. Because right. I was I was thinking I'm sure there's another really great bit in Genesis. Yeah, there's the bit where the D Davros is interrogating the Doctor. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that is really, really There's good. There's also actually. that good bit with Sarah Jane where she's climbing up. The, mm. I always remember that. Bit, that, that is good. But the, the bit you were talking about yeah. just a minute ago when when, when he's, he's basically saying to Davos, would he destroy... I can't think of the exact dialogue. And he goes, yeah, yes, he's like, yes, I would. Sort of thing. And, and he starts thinking about yeah. how powerful... And Nida comes along. And yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a really, a really good bit. So, um, the five we agree on. Did you want to read them out? Okay, so we agreed on the scent pools. No, sorry, the. Uh, That's the one we didn't agree on. Yeah. So <laughs> the what's uh, the one we agreed on was uh, the Tom Baker scene from uh -huh. Dave's Doctor, the Auton scene from Spearhead from Space. Not the Auton scene. The window smashing yeah. scene from yeah. Spearhead from Space. Well, that is Autons, isn't it? Yeah, it is, so. but. Uh, Victoria's and the Doctor's chat in Tomb of the Cybermen, mm -hmm. uh, the two wires seen in Genesis of the Daleks. Did you change the gallery one in Vincent and the I've Doctor? I've put that one in, yeah. And Vincent and the Doctor's the gallery. And the one I didn't agree on with uh, Decal, and the one, well, Decal didn't agree with me on was uh, St. Paul's, uh, the mar Cybermen marching down St. Paul's in the invasion. Which, is, which would probably be number seven, to be fair. Yeah, it's <laughs> a number classic. Eight. It'd be, it'd be there it's the about. first one I put on it because yeah. when I think of the when I think of Doctor Who classic scenes, I just immediately think of that scene. Yeah, yeah. So it's on there first of all. Yeah. And what's your other one? My my the agree? one that you you didn't agree with me on is the regeneration scene from um, the Fourth Doctor yeah. with the Watcher, which I think, like you say, it's probably it's probably not as good a scene as I've got it rated. It's just that that is one of my earliest memories of Doctor yeah. Who. So. I think 
we'll be continuing the six episode, the six mm, challenge next week. Ooh. Uh, should we continue it with the six doctors? Yeah, you why not? Yeah, that'd, that'd be a good one. Yeah, that? yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, okay. favorite six doctors. Yeah, and we can challenge. Yeah, good. That why? Should be, that should be the discussion for for next week. Yeah. Good, brilliant. I hope you enjoy that. Challenge what, part four. What we would love to know, folks, is if you've got Twitter, or yeah, or any other social media, or any other social media. Uh, yeah, yeah. Et, go to at dr who uh, time un as in n space on Twitter, and um, tell us or tell Lewis because that's his account what you would think. Is your six favourite scenes? You may have to do it in six separate yep. tweets, I don't know. Because uh, you've limited to numbers of letters. Well, just tell us your favourite or tell us whether you agree yeah. on any of them. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Tell us whether you've got any others, you know? Well, thank you if you're still joining us wittering on. Hmm. I don't know whether anyone watches the whole of the show or whether <laughs> everyone just turns off at the uh, news section. But Or when we go, welcome! At the beginning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it probably. Could, could be the case. But no, hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed the chat. But we, we, yeah. we'd always love to hear from you, whether it's um, about any particular item on the show or whatever. You, we've also got a Facebook account, but yeah, again, yeah. I've, I've forgotten what the address of that is. I've what so. that one is, because well, I don't control that one. So we're trying, we're trying to link that in with something so you can contact us on there as well. Good. That probably wraps yeah. up that section. So let's move on to our, our review, review of, of Cold War. So then, last week, the randomizer, which picks up a random episode from, you know, the 53 years or 52 and 11 months of Doctor Who. And uh, picks up a random episode out of those 53 years. And uh, we watch it and then we review it the next week. Last week, the 11th Doctor story, The Cold War, came up from his third series, which is the 7th of New Who and the 33rd overall, I believe. So, uh, okay. can you give us a little story synopsis of Cold War, please, Decal? I can, and this is, um, so as Lewis said, it's a 11th Dr. Matt Smith episode. It also has got Clara as a companion, and this is, I think, if I'm right, Clara's first experience of travelling back in time. I think it is, yeah. Because it's her third story, isn't it? Yes, it is. If, oh, assuming you're talking about this particular version of Clara, because yeah. we've obviously seen her. The proper time Clara. This. So, what do we have with this one? Well, this story is based. It's, it's one of these ones which is based pretty much in one site, which is a Soviet submarine, and the submarine's sailing near the North Pole during the middle of the the Cold War. So it's uh, early part of the 80s, and they are undertaking a launch drill. For a nuclear weapon. As they do that, there's an interruption from um, the professor. I can't remember his, his, his name, but the professor on there, who refers to this find that they've got, which is um, this big block of ice that they think has probably got a, a frozen mammoth within it. But when one of the crew starts to burn into the ice to find out what is inside, it's not a mammoth at all, folks. It turns out to be something which we hadn't seen in Doctor Who since going back to the uh, the Third Doctor era. It's an Ice Warrior. So the return of the Ice Warriors. First return of the yeah. Ice Warriors. And the in, only one so Who. far. Yeah, that's it. So, um, basically the Ice Warrior escapes from this ice and starts running amok uh, amongst the submarine. At that point, the TARDIS, which was planning on going towards Las Vegas and I, lo- I love that scene the scene when when they basically come out yeah. of the TARDIS like Viva Las Vegas and, ah! there's, and there's all the water pouring down on the on the submarine that's that's really really good so the uh, the doctor and Clara sort of fall into the the submarine and they they basically got to try and um, convince the captain who's played by Liam Cunningham who uh, us Game of Thrones fans will recall as being Davos Seaworth from, from Game of Thrones and How did you know his actor's name? Did you look at Wikipedia? I have looked it up, yeah. Oh. I, I, as you know, I'm, I'm appalling at names of actors and things. Um, so they, they managed to, to, to save the, the, uh, the crew from the sort of imploding submarine. 
Um, but then they then bump into this ice warrior and they're trying to sort of pacify, or, or certainly the Doctor's trying to, to pacify the Ice Warrior, but things go a bit askew when one of the uh, members of the crew basically cattle prods uh, the Ice Warrior, who we find out is none other than... Um, Marshall Scalder. Who is a sort of legendary Ice Warrior sort of hero, isn't he? The sort of met war- before. Yeah, say. Has he actually met him before? I'm not sure. I think he has. I was trying to think through that, whether he was a character that had actually been featured in one of the earlier stories or not. He wasn't in it. No, so it's just it's somebody that... I, I, I don't think the Doctor's meant to have met him. I think he's just he's aware of him, I, I think. Okay. But that'd be interesting thing to, to look at. that puts a plot that. hole in Awakening of the Sea Devils, doesn't it? Ah, maybe. Maybe. So, uh, where was we? So, well, that's probably about enough of a... Yeah. Enough of a... What? Enough of a Sorry. sort of a... A summary of the story, anyway. I think because yeah. basically we don't want to ruin it for you. Although we probably always do it a little bit because there's always yeah. a bit of a spoiler so, alert. Yeah. Thing for, for well, we these. spoiled. We said spoiler alert at the beginning of exactly. the class. So yeah. this is not really spoilers, but you should have watched it by now. It's three years ago. If you're exactly. a proper fan, you should have watched episodes which were out three years ago. So what do you make of this? Um. Well, no. Sorry, I might have sounded rude then. Viewers, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so that's, that, that's like the remaining viewers turned off. Click. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry for being mean. Just forget what I said. I, I, I'll be in. You're lovely, really. Aren't you? Yes. Yeah, nice. So what? What do you make of? What do oh, you make um, of Cold War? I think Cold War is a very underrated episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not really rated that highly, I don't think, by people. No. But I think it's a really deserved. Return for the Ice Warriors. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Cause I, I watched it when it was on, yeah. and it's the first time I've watched it since then. Yes. The first time I watched it, I really enjoyed it, but I found it was a little bit rushed. Yes, I did as well, but I don't know why I thought that. No, I thought so. the same actually. In, in fact, I, I I don't think it was rushed. I, it I don't think they would have struggled to. I think I must have. I think I got <laughs> m- muddled up a little bit with Hyde. Maybe. And I think I got muddled up by the thought that a few of the episodes in this series hmm. were a bit rushed. I'm, I remember consciously saying that I found this one was a bit rushed when, when I watched it the first time. But actually, I think if they'd have put, added it... Because it's a very limited story, really, yeah, it isn't it? Is. In reality, it's just an ice warrior running amok on a, on a, on a submarine. And so they can't really spawn that out for... You know, you don't think they can spawn that out for... Uh, 45 minutes but it's five minutes shorter than most mm. episodes yeah so yeah so it, 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 I, I think it's probably about about right length because it is a, it's a very basic story and I always thought that if it was rushed why did they make it five minutes shorter but mm. now I think it's not rushed I sort of think it was a very hard story to do so few questions based around it. Yep. Obviously, as, as we mentioned earlier on, it's the first time we've seen the Ice Warriors since John Pertwee. So the first yes, appearance... Um, since Monster since, of Caledon. Yeah. So 39 it's, it's, years after. Uh-huh. So, yeah. New Who. We've seen with New Who that they have periodically brought back classic monsters. Yeah. With differing success, I think, in yes. terms of how they look. I think this... Uh, the Ice Warriors uh, uh, are one of the most successful. Mm-hmm. I think the Zygons may be the most successful. Yeah. Because uh, I like it when the monsters remain similar but have a modern sort of touch and the Sontarans didn't do so well. Silurians didn't do so well. Even the Cybermen, I think. Even the Cybermen. I, I, didn't I do still so. think the Cybermen now just look a bit too. They're just they're not as scary. Looking. Obviously, the Daleks can't change at all. No, so no. Although they, they did give them a bit of a colour, didn't they? Yeah, they did. But it's nobody funny. liked that. So um, I, I'd, I'd agree with you. Actually, they've kept the basic design. I think one of the things that I think is quite entertaining about the story is there's a moment where Skaldek escapes. He's, he's he's held as a prisoner and he escapes from his costume. And at that stage, he's really, really fast. Yes, he is. And I, and I think one of the jokes around sort of older Doctor Who villains, yeah. and particularly Ice Warriors, was that they were yeah. very clunky and in the way that they moved. Slow, really, really slow moving. they're sort of in armour and they're yeah. sort of, You can't really move. Yeah. You can't really run when you're in like that heavy armour. No. So I thought that was that was quite entertaining, the fact that when they're not in their armour, 
they're sort of um, speedy Gonzales, aren't they? Yeah. So that, that that was good. What do you make of the rest of the cast in this one? Uh, I think they're all quite good. I like David Warner in this. Yes, he's, he's good. Uh, I can't think professor, of professor, isn't he? I can't, yeah. I can't remember. I can't uh, remember his full name, but he's, he's the professor. Professor Grisenko. Grisenko. There's also um, another Game of Thrones uh, guy. He's the guy that plays Edmure. Talent, yes. who I, I can't remember his actor's name, but yeah, yeah he's he well. Cam- Liam Cunningham, what do you think of him? Uh, he's, he's good, uh, but I, I just I just saw him as Davos, it's yeah, funny. No, but, um, yeah, but it, it, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I, if I was thinking about whether I like this story, I do really like it, it's a good yeah. fun story. I think it, it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it wasn't quite as good as I remembered it being. Okay. But I think that was because the first time around, it's one of those episodes that's quite exciting, isn't it? Because you yeah. don't know where it's going to crop up next. So yeah, you lose that element of excitement. So I, it, it wasn't as strong as but I thought. I think it's one of Mark Gattis's best, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it sort of gets middle of the chart. Yeah. Uh, maybe just below middle. But yeah, I think, I think overall, out of, if you have every single episode, it would probably be... There and thereabouts in the middle. Yeah, I think. I mean, if you we, we've got our randomizer chart, haven't we? So we that was the eighty third Doctor Who story we've watched. And in the it's a bit weird because we've got we're on episode one hundred and eighty three. We've got yeah, that's true. So but that's that will change soon, won't it? Yeah. So yeah, so out of those eighty three, since we started uh, ranking things, it was around the sort of fifty mark for yes, both of us. I can't remember the exact number. Uh, should we look? You can do, yeah. Uh, will it still go yeah, on here? Yeah, it still run, that's fine. Uh, yeah. So it was 49 for me yeah. and 51 for you. Yeah, so yeah, I had average, two marks 50. above you. Yeah. So 50, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a good story. How do you think it ranks in the Matt Smith era? Uh, do you think it's one of the strong ones? And how do you think it ranks in terms of that series? In terms of that series? Mm-hmm. I'd say it's one of the better ones of that series. I don't know. It's in the middle of everything. Mm. Because it's that series has some really good ones, like Name the Doctor and, you know, uh, Asylum of the Daleks, Angels Take Manhattan. But there's also some weak ones, like Dinosaurs on the Spaceship. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Rune's Wacken, Nightmare and Silver. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think it's brilliant seeing the Ice Warriors come back, albeit yeah. just the one. I would like to see the Ice Warriors return with a multi-Ice Warrior type story. Do you think it would be Mark Gattis again? Possibly. Well, I'd like to see a two-parter. Yeah. You know, written by Stephen Moffat or Chibnall or, who, or whoever's doing it. Or some sort of good writer. Paul Cornell should come back. Yeah. Yeah. I think the interesting thing about the Ice Warriors, isn't it, is that over the years, if we think about the stories that they've been in, sometimes they've been good, sometimes yeah. they haven't. Yeah. In this one, actually, the, the Skaldex really is self defence, isn't it, and then revenge. Yeah. Um, but to start with, he's, he's, I guess he does run a bit of mock in the ship, doesn't he, come to think of it. But yeah. again, they, they leave peacefully, don't they? Yeah. It's not do, like the they Ice do. Warriors, they could quite easily just completely zonk that ship. Yeah, but they don't. But they don't. So, you know, it's, well, it's, still, it's still debatable. They're certainly not as evil as in Daleks. Or the no. Cybermen, are they? It's sort of an origin story like Dalek, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. is the Ice Warriors going to come back? I mean, in Dalek, it was one Dalek. And then later on in that series, the next time they came back, it was loads of them. So yeah. I'd like to see a story set on Mars with mm-hmm. the Ice Warriors because we've never had that before. Or yeah. Return to Peladon. Return to Peladon. Oh, I'd love to see a Peladon story. Yeah. Okay, does that pretty much wrap up our, our thoughts on the Cold War? Yes, I think it does, apart from scores. Okay, so fire away with your scoring criteria. So, monsters! It's the Ice Warriors, it's nine. Uh, character development. Character development. Not a significant amount. I think what is quite interesting in this one is you you... Even at an early stage, you, you're sensing Clara as really wanting to prove something. Yeah. I think as the episode goes on, you, you see that more and more, don't you? Yes, you do. So, yeah. So, so there's a bit of development there. 
Um, but probably I'll, I'll give it about, I'll say probably about seven for the Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, pace. Pace. It's good pace actually to this one. I think it's it's fairly for what the story is. What the, what the story is, it's got a good it's good pace to it. I'll give it an eight. Uh, yeah. Uh, excitement. Excitement, quite an exciting one. I'll give it an eight again. Uh, Thirty two out of forty, so quite a good score. Yeah, it's probably a better score than the episode is. Yes. What do you think the episode is? I would say the episode is probably... Can I use 0.5 or not? I can't remember. Uh, yes, you can do I'm, point anything. Point anything. I'm going to give it about a 7.8. Okay, I'm going to give it a 7.9. Okay. Good. So one point ahead of you. So Cold War, in summary, good episode. Not yeah. not sort of... It's, it's like one of these ones which is it's never going to okay. change the world, is it? It's yeah, not, it's not and one. it's not as good the second time because you know what's coming. It's like, yeah. listen, yeah. it's that sort of episode. It's not one which is going to get into your, your top six scenes of all time. Yeah, but I hope it's going to be a setup for something else that's coming. Yeah, but definitely definitely an enjoyable one to watch. So... We don't need to do the... So we'll, we'll go straight to pressing the magic yeah, randomizer. Yeah, because we don't have time for who to face today. We don't, do we? Alas. So... As always. We let's go to the randomizer. Yeah. Save. So, um, randomizer, Lewis mentioned earlier on, this big spreadsheet that we've got with every episode of Doctor Who ever in it. Uh, we press this little macro button, which will randomly suggest a episode that we're going to watch next week and talk about on next week's show. We ready? We're ready to go. So press that magic randomizer button. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we're still. It's another new who one. Yes, and Would it's like quite to, a new one. Do you say what it is? Uh, it's Kill the Moon. Okay. So. I'd be interested to is, see that one This is one which we thought was another one which we thought was much better than people said. Yeah, I'm quite intrigued with this one because. Yeah. This is a story that I really, really enjoyed when it was yeah, on. Yeah, definitely I was, the ending sequence. Yeah. And I was surprised right. at the amount of hate that this episode got yeah. from people. And Peter Harness did come back and do an even yeah. better story with the Zygon team yeah. partner. But um, I love this story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely the ending sequence. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to rejudge it. Yes. I, I, I think it would be interesting to hear your opinions on it for the second time round. Yeah. We could do another video again on, on Wednesday. We can. Probably. We probably can. Probably just be me this time. I don't know, unless we think of something. Yeah. Okay, so um, that pretty much wraps it up. i tell you what would be interesting, folks. Yeah. If you've, uh, listeners out there, if you've um, got recollections of um, the story we're going to be watching next Kill week, the Moon. Kill the Moon, um, it'd be great to hear them in yeah. advance, wouldn't it? Either at the bottom of this video on YouTube, or if you're yeah. listening to it on Podomatic or iTunes. Can you comment on that? You can. You can comment comment on Podomatic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or um, drop us a tweet. Can you just mention the tweet address again? D R who type un as in end space. Yeah. So um, it's not got the as in bit in there. No. It's just you know. Uh, that's in brackets. D R who, <laughs> time un n space. Yeah. Yeah. Or Mark Freak Geek, which is me. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much. We'd we'd love to hear what your thoughts are on on Kill the Moon or uh, yeah. anything or that you Cold want to show War, us. Yeah. Or class episode three. Yeah. One, two, maybe four. If you if you get to that point by the time both before we do the podcast yeah just chat to us folks yeah, chat to us, chat to to us. You. your favourite seats yep. your favourite doctors yep. anything anything to do like. with Doctor Who yep. from the last show the next show mm -hmm. or a recent show good well I've been Doctor Cool and I've been Lewis Moon uh, what's coming next week oh yeah I forgot about that bit yeah we'll do what, the, what yeah. is coming next week uh, it's episode 184 and we will be looking at our top six Doctors. Mm. We will be reviewing Kill the Moon. We will be reviewing episode four of Class, aka co-owner of a lonely heart. We'll have some news and views from the Hooniverse. We will be pressing the magic randomizer button. <laughs> and if we've got time, we'll do a who to face for you. Unlikely, but, but it is unlikely because because we've got class. Because we've got a lot to talk about at the moment. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. 
I'm Dr. Cool signing out. And I'm Lewis Reed signing out. We'll see you next time. Same time. Same space. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.